Hi guys, Roos here. We're here with Mel, who played a rather interesting deck at the UK Nationals. Uh, how did you do? Uh, I got 128, I think 89th overall, 83 record. Nice, nice. And what were you playing? Uh, Flame Swordsman Infernoble. Flame Swordsman Infernoble. Guys, this deck is beautiful, just giving you a heads up. So, uh, why don't you talk me through it, Mel? Okay, so, the main deck. So, for the Flame Swordsman Engine, we've got three of the normal summon. Three collectors, normal summons. Let's... We've got one of the dragon, three of the quick play, trap, continuous, and the fusion. So, quick rundown of these. This is a beautiful card. There's a solid normal summon. It's searchable off the Durandal. Uh, it searches for the quick play, or it's just any of these. You can use the search for the quick play, which searches for any card that mentions Flame Swordsman. Uh, the deck this engine gives us like lots of utility into board, so this this can search for sword, which can be used as a pop, for example, for floodgates. Uh, I use it for like once to pop a um, Tikabu against Runic Stun. Nice, uh, nice. When it goes to Crazy or Foolish the Dragon, the Dragon will then search for either the trap or the spell. The trap is what you end on with your final board. It's a Book of Moon plus a Miracle Fusion. Um, so this engine was absolutely insane. The only issue with it. Is that I think a lot of the games I lost when I was only seeing these cards is they don't actually set up the Infernoble half by themselves. Yeah, it's just like a facilitator, yeah. uh, an additional engine that, that helps. So going alongside that, we've got three Renaud, one Oliver, one Morgus, one Turpin, one Ogier, four the Infernoble monsters. Three uh, more collectors' uh, cards here. We've Very got. Nice. Um, I think notable thing to say: no Gearfried, no Gearfried anywhere in this list. Um, I found that every time you would be setting up Gear Free for Ogier Reynold, Ogier can just send the um, fighting instead. Fighting instead of search trap, Reynold can have a fighting for next turn. Um, only real comment would be this could maybe be cut. It was a, like probably one of the more brickier cards, so it far too often. And I think the times where I'll be setting up the draw is not really substantial on the fact how many times I drew it, and it was just more of a brick. Yeah. But the spell's got three heritage. Two Durandal, one Museum, one Rota. Uh, Lovely. Carry on. For these, it's standard. This, um, anyone who's like following my profiles or my lists while I've been playing this deck knows that I'm not a fan of Museum. It's honestly just feels like a brick. It only searches this, and this is good to draw anyway. Why are we trying to search a card that we want to open? But <laughs> it is QCR. Yeah. So. You know, swings and roundabouts. Exactly. So it's like we draw these two, for example. It's um, we want to search, we want to open with this, which is good. But we've got two copies of it, so yeah. Why are we trying to send them? It's such by anyway in the combo through every single combo line. Would you would you change that lineup at all or? or... No, absolutely not. Do you know, no. uh, I think the only thing I have about this build currently is sliding more into like voiceless does. Yeah. Because I felt maybe sometimes that going first can be bricky. Yeah. Okay. So like perhaps hiding more museums and an owl mace, for example, or something like that. Yeah. Um, okay. But so the list performed absolutely brilliantly. The only issue I had was drone drawing flame swordsman cards. <laughs> so for the non-engine, sadly, this is what we have to do this format. Yeah, unless you play tier. 16. Um, so for a long time I was on 13, uh, but last well, like for the last couple of weeks, I cut down on multiple lovers and multiple turpins to play three tactics. This card is insane, literally best card of my entire deck. And hand traps are hand traps. So we have Mel and Solomon both just playing thousands of uh, hand traps, but I mean, you got to do what you got to do, haven't we? We know how we need to compete this format. Yeah, yeah. For the extra deck, for the synchro, play three. Only one shiny one this time. Still beautiful. So, very standard. This is made off every combo. This summons this, this makes this. Yep. Nice and simple. Or the good cards, the very spicy cards. One Ultimate Flame Swordsman, one Fighting Flame Dragon, one OG Flame Swordsman. <laughs> oh boy. So, this is soundable off the Continuous Spell. This is how you usually OTK. So, this uh, this can go onto any Flame Swordsman or Fusion Monster, Flame Swordsman Fusion Monster, and it gives 700 attack and two attacks in the battle phase. We yeah. Can quickly see how this gets out. Yeah. <laughs> this is what you usually end it, um, what you usually end in the game on. It doubles its attack. So it becomes 7k with this it pops uh, attacks twice. Uh, it's a quick effect to pop a monster and burn 500. 
and said you can very easily see how this gets out of hand extremely quickly. Yep. I think I punched mm. someone for, I think it was 14,000 twice. Gives you the time option as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you're going to do this on monsters, so I yeah. never never had issues of time. I was either losing or um, <laughs> I was far ahead. So I've got Typhon. Typhon for me was absolutely insane. Um, played against Chimera, played against um, Snake Eye as well. Just selling this, slapping it. Uh, something this, um, it blocks Flamberge, it blocks um, Guardian Chimera, and a Chaos Angel was kept against Chimera, and um, just kept me alive. <laughs> it's so good, man. It's like, such a good card. Typhon is, is just, it's a perfect card in my opinion. Like, the, the effect of it is fantastic, but it's not one of those cards which is just a joke or... or it's not oppressive. It's, um, yeah, like, it, it has drawbacks to the card, but itself allows always. you to play into boards. I, I really like the design of this card. It's I think last, it's brilliant. It's a last resort, and it always will be. Yeah. Uh, so for the links, we got heater, dark, call a snake eye, but um, yeah, I don't know, doing it more stylish. Um, <laughs> we've got anima, we have sp, we've got the Charles link standard, and the prince uh, costs another quarter century. We've got a princess, and the last two cards we shot probably a bit more tail to this deck. We've got cross sheep, we'll have a last minute inclu inclusion. Um, I love cross sheep. A lot of the lines where you're um. So in the flame swordsman, you can like make this. So so in back, make the princess and very yeah. easy to case. Yep. And the ferocious flame swordsman. This helps boost your monsters. So all warriors gain 500. So again, with the big guy. So if you're, for example, popping the dragon on this with the uh, final flame, flame swords on the field, that's 8k twice. It's like a tempai dragon. It's tempai, but again, more stylish. Yeah, 100, and much more fun and interactive. Yeah. So this. The other effect of this, which is one main reason I played it, you can crash this. When it's destroyed, the final card effect, it, or your opponent's card effect, you can spec back a warrior from your graveyard, a non link one. So you, a couple of times today, I was crashing this, summoning back Emperor Charles, and battling something with Emperor Charles, equipping and then popping something else. It's honestly absolutely insane. It's how I won. Um, I played into a full runic light swan board, and um, I say broke it all because of this card. Nice, nice. Last and not least, oh, side deck. Tops. So, card I swear by, two Pankra Tops. Um, who needs Cosmic Cyclone when you've got um, Cosmic Cyclone at home? <laughs> cosmic Cyclone with legs. Yeah. Alongside that, you got enough hand traps to, um, yeah, beat the format. So you wanted some hand traps to go with your hand traps in case your hand traps weren't hand trapping. Exactly. So I want to coverage through every matchup. Uh, Literally. <laughs> you've got, like, I think the only issue I had with this side deck is um, I didn't have a lot for Tempi. I didn't respect her a lot, thinking that my deck had a better matchup into it than actually ended up having. And as I said, I probably played D Barrows. I'm like, I was considering Frost with um, even Friending Raw. That was a consideration. Yeah. So you get Shift when you set Friending Raw and you pass to them. Yeah. And hope that you don't die, which um, obviously is, unless they cross out, you're fine. Um, I think other than that, that, that's the profile. All right, um, well, um, nothing you change other than that? Uh, I think I said, I think I've tried, like, I think the deck is where it needs to be. It's, um, it has its issues. It, for example, yeah. only one engine, like the Plainsworth engine doesn't get you to your Infernoble stuff and there's no real way you can fix that because um, it's odds banned. Yeah, but it, it facilitates a lot of the OTKs and also bridges the gap, I think. Yeah, so. absolutely. So, you're your struggle is you're playing a two card combo deck into a format of one card combos. Yes. Like you're launching fighting flame swords when your opponent's normal summoning ash. Yeah, understandable. Uh, I feel that. <laughs> it's a case of I love this deck. I've played it for so long now that I'm so glad I could actually perform with it. Well, congratulations on your top 100 finish. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.